Right, time for the San Francisco 49ers aftermath. Final look at their Super Bowl performance from a passing standpoint. Uh, just like the Chiefs, kind of a tale of two halves. Really good in the first half, I thought, uh, overall. Not very good in the second half. For the Chiefs, not very good in the first half, but really good in the second half and how they chose to attack uh, the defense they were playing against. Also, give a lot of credit to the Kansas City Chiefs. You'll see it throughout this video. They did a great job of getting physical with the 49ers uh, receivers, not letting them get off the ball, not letting them create separation. Sneed, McDuffie stood out. McDuffie maybe is my MVP, and I know Chris Jones played great. Chanel, Leo Chanel played great. Also, could have been in the mix, but McDuffie, you'll see on this tape, play after play, uh, physical after physical, uh, thought he just played an unbelievable football game. So love, uh, you know, how you start the game, right? You got a young quarterback uh, come out with an easy play. The naked bootleg, naked bootlegs, which you're always going to have, is going to have somebody coming to the flat, somebody running an over, somebody running into the deep area of the field, all those typical elements Brock Purdy really good in these situations. So nice job here. And what I always like is you come off a of naked, get some depth while you're turning your head. Okay, get some depth. You don't come out flat. Get some depth so you can stay away from this defender right here. Buy some time to make the throw and negotiate that player. Nice job right there. And then the run after catch, use check, doing a nice job. Their versatility is a great way to start the football game. Okay, so I talk about it all the time. San Francisco's offense is very much based on um, pure progression plays. Okay, so right here, we're going to run Brandon Ayuk uh, on an out route. Then we're going to bring George Kittle on a shallow route. Then we're going to bring Christian McCaffrey on an angle route or an under route or however you want to call it. And so uh, the idea here is one, two, three. Doesn't really matter what you get. You're going to look to see if Ayuk's open, then you're going to work back across the field. Nicely done here by Brock Purdy. Now, maybe you got a shot at Ayuk. Now, keep going. Keep going. Don't slow down. Don't let the guy inside cover you, right? Even if this guy comes off over here, know that you've got a guy clearing it out. Run out of it. Run out of it, maybe an easy uh, completion out there for a first down. If you run out of it instead of slow out of it and allow this guy to just widen a little bit and cover it, but good coverage on the shallow. Good job by Brock to work back through this to his number three, put it on top of Christian McCaffrey. And really some nice things early in this drive. Good mix between the run and the pass. And we know that that drive ended uh, although it was promising, it ended with the Christian McCaffrey fumble right off the bat. All right, again, a staple in this offense, okay? So we're going to go heavy protection, and we've got the swing route right here by Debo Samuel, and then we're going to run the in route. And this is where, really, Brock Purdy was so good all year. And I know a lot of people don't understand it, but... We're banking on the fact that the play action and the split of the backs move the linebackers to open up the middle of the field. You're not going to see another receiver underneath to pull the linebackers up and then get the opening behind it. So a lot of these throws, when they're throwing these ends, become Brock, throw it around the linebackers. Find the hole and make the throw. No different right here, right? You see it. We got... Movement by the front side linebacker with McCaffrey, good, but we didn't get a whole lot of movement with these backside guys, so now it's throw around those guys. Well done by Brock, wraps it to the inside of the middle linebacker, great throw, boom, right on the money, chunk throw, and we're moving, a staple of the San Francisco offense, attack between the hashes off of play action, but a lot of those throws are a lot harder than they look because it's not a true, hey, we're stretching this guy. We're just hoping he moves. If he doesn't move, you've got to find and make whatever the proper throw is in that situation. Brock Purdy did that excellently this year. Okay, now this one. Um, okay, so we go back to the pure progression stuff. And so this is the kind of stuff that sometimes to me is really, really hard. So we're going to have... Um, 
George Kittle go down the middle right here. And then on this side, we run a one-step route here, and then we run a return over here, okay? So with the pure progression idea is you don't have really more than one option at a time, okay? So if you're reading to the front side, it's the one step right now, and then you gotta wait for the return to come um, and then hope that he can replace over there. On the other side, we're running an under here um, with Christian McCaffrey. Let me run this, I think we're running, yeah, and, and so, uh, yeah, I'm not really sure what this route is, if it's a shallow route or what, but again, we've got a one step coming inside, we've got the backside guy coming inside, we've got this guy coming inside, we've got this guy coming inside, so we're just, a lot of stuff going on, and, and even the return, right? Everybody coming back to the inside, instead of clearing it out with some guys going outside, some guys going inside, we've got a lot of guys going inside, and we're bringing a bunch of bodies to the inside, but maybe the biggest thing for me is Legereus Sneed is the one that's out here on Christian McCaffrey. So he's sitting inside. You already see that right now. You know he's not afraid of Christian McCaffrey to run by him. If Christian McCaffrey's going to go, he feels good about catch-up speed to be able to, to cover a running back going down the field. So he plants himself inside here. And so this is what makes it tough. And again, I'm not sure if Brock has the... Uh, the ability to start over here and then work back because that's probably the best option. You see over here, we've got three defenders to that side plus a corner on Christian McCaffrey. I'm probably trying to find my receivers um, as opposed to running a, a running back on an under against a cornerback right here. But I, I don't know how they ask him to read it. You know, the other thing that I look at here is I always look at who's pressed, who's off. So we get press up here on Debo, so that's probably dead on the one step. I'm looking for that guy to be off, but I'm saying to myself, okay, I've got Kittle down the middle, maybe I'll peek at that, and then I can work back and try to get the return over there. Maybe you're gonna say, I'm gonna look at Christian McCaffrey and then work back to the return. I can live with that too, but to me, it's as much about pre-snap and understanding all the bodies over here to this side against this particular route with the running back being my primary against a corner. I'm probably going to try to find somebody else right here. And you see it doesn't win early. There's really nothing going on. And the other thing, finish your routes, finish your routes. Okay. So I need Debo to finish. I know he's not open. I know he's getting jammed. He's not going to get the football finish run through here. Why? Because then it opens up this return back behind you. But right now we're covered up here because we've slowed down on this one step. And now maybe he's slowing down because we got stuff coming back here. And that could be part of it. Play design forces Debo to go, well, I'm not going to run through there because we're probably going to throw it to the inside. So I'm going to slow down. And then it messes up the combination that we have front side. So some of these kind of pure progression ideas aren't necessarily my favorite, I've talked about it a lot. I'd like to have different options on different sides and make sure they all complement each other. But another great job here by Brock Purdy. And I've seen him do this numerous times this year. Normally, we tell ourselves as quarterbacks, don't throw it late over the middle. Don't try to throw it back across the field because there's usually bodies there. But he's made a living doing it this year. And he gets a huge play right here doing the exact same thing. Would have had them rolling. Big chunk play right there in first down. But this was already coming off of a penalty for uh, illegal motion. Now we get a holding penalty as he runs out. And I'm not going to really put that on Trent because one of the things you see all the time is when a quarterback rolls out of the pocket, you're blocking expecting him to be in the pocket behind you. He rolls out. All of a sudden, the defender starts to pull away from you as a tackle. And that's where sometimes holding looks really, really obvious because they pull away. You've kind of got a hold of them. Even if you got a hold of them inside, you see the jersey pull and uh, the holding comes. So it's, it's more a product of moving out of the pocket than it is a bad play by Trent Williams. Okay, another staple in their offense. Uh, we talked about it is the post over combination. Again, fakeness right here. We've already seen that on the play action where we tried to hit the in back behind it. But now we're going to try to get the over. So as we go right here, good protection. 
and just a missed opportunity right here. Okay, we're getting this over and we missed this throw. Now, it takes a long time to get there. So if it takes too long, just work it down. Work it down to one of your check downs. Again, not easy, okay? So I know we can always circle these guys on tape. It's not easy because what we're telling the quarterback is really your read is happening over here. You're coming out, you're reading to see if you get the post. I don't have it. Then you're gonna try to find the flat defender. He says to throw the over. So it's not always easy to read your high low and read all of this to the left side and then get back to the middle or the right side. But I just feel because it took so long here to transpire and he had pretty good protection, it would have been, uh, you know, it would have been feasible for him to just find his check down out in front of him and get a completion because he got out of whack a little bit, holding it, holding it, holding it. It's not open. Just check it down and take what you can get. All right, so again, like these kind of things much better, okay? So here, we're gonna get out here and we're gonna clear this out. We're gonna run the cornerback behind it. Now in this play, we're gonna run a return, okay? So, and again, the return set up so it's more of a pure progression. You can't really take the flat or the out right now if they give it to you. You gotta wait for this guy to go out and come all the way back in. So it kind of lends itself to go one and two over here um, and they get a perfect coverage for it. I like the fact that they run kind of uh, a combination to each side. So they have George Kittle pushing down. I think he's going to run an in route here and then a choice route by the back. So I like these kind of concepts much better where it's pick a side. It's not so much read left to right. It's not the pure progression, although that's primarily what they like to do in San Francisco's offense. I like that they split it down the middle here. And the one thing that you know is when you look at this configuration right here, you've got man up top, okay? So that probably means you have man down low. So I wouldn't have been mad at uh, Brock if he decides to go to the choice route, um, who actually is being covered by this safety who's coming down to the backside. But I have no problem going to the front side. So you see on the backside, easy completion here to the back if you want it against man-to-man -man coverage. But I like this to the top too because you can tell these two guys are playing what we call combo coverage. Okay, what's combo man coverage? That means, uh, we'll just circle the inside guy. That means the inside guy will take the first guy that goes inside by the same idea. The outside guy will take the first guy that goes outside. So what you really want to do is you want to get two guys going inside or two guys going outside. So if here we ran Brandon Ayuk inside and then we brought Jennings inside, it would be perfect because this inside guy now is in a bind. He's got to run with Brandon Ayuk and you get leverage from the outside guy as you run away from him. Okay, same token here, they run two outside. So they start with this guy outside, perfect. We want to grab the outside guy and we want to get the leverage we want. So this guy's sitting inside. We get inside leverage on an outside breaking route. So they got two guys going outside. Really well done here and it leads to a huge play. Connolly, right, didn't play a whole lot uh, throughout the season, but does a nice job here setting up the defender and getting the big play on the corner route. Really good play design against that man-to-man -man combo coverage. And that combo coverage happens when you're in the tighter alignments, right? Like bunch alignments. So they did a nice job in this game at times of getting into those tight alignments and forcing some switches by the secondary of Kansas City. When they were more stagnant in their, uh, in their alignments, they had a harder time separating. All right. So same kind of premise here uh, that we had before. So Brandon Ayuk on the one before this runs the post. On this one, he's going to come back and run the pylon. All right. I talked about this with the Chiefs if you watch those videos, but the pylon. I call it a pylon route because I want my receiver to run to the pylon. Run to the back pylon. Work on it, work on it, work on it. Run to the back pylon. Don't come out too flat. If you come out too flat, it's a really, really hard throw for the quarterback, okay? Because trying to drive a throw 35, 40 yards over a corner is a hard thing to do. If you run to the back pylon, it becomes more like a go route where I can time it up and I can just throw it to a spot and let you go get it. I don't have to drive it. Plus, it doesn't allow the cornerback to be able to play 
two guys. Okay, so the flatter you come out, the more and the harder it is to make the throw, but the more the corner can be involved. The higher you come out, the more pressure that's put on the corner because if I simply get past you in depth wise, and then I run away from you instead of running towards you, now you've got to make up ground as a cornerback, get depth and width to kind of cut off the space between us. So I just want you to watch Brandon Ayuk here. Good, good, good. That's really good. Now don't flatten it off. See how he starts to flatten it off and he's probably going to run out of bounds at about the goal line or maybe the five yard line. Okay, I don't want him to do that. I want you to run to the back pylon. He's got Legereus Sneed by a step here, right there. He's got him by a step. If you now run this high and away from him, now he's got to catch up that ground and he's got to squeeze back to you. So if he starts running towards you, that gives you a better chance to get over the top of him. Okay, not that we necessarily throw this here because Legereus Sneed at this time is taking off and running, but just keep your angle higher and draw him to you. Um, now he ends up falling off late, so it says maybe we could have had a shot right there to that deep one, but great throw here by Brock Purdy who's already letting this go, and it's a dime right on the money. The corner's coming off, but because he put it on him so quickly, he's able to protect him from the throw. Now, for me, I would like to see this, and again, San Francisco seems to do this a little bit differently, where it's almost like we're going to waste a little more time here and then come over late. I would like to do the opposite. I like to get this guy over here faster, okay? Get him over here faster for one of two reasons, okay? If we're running the post like we saw earlier, it puts more pressure on this safety. If you get there on the over and he hesitates, man, we get a shot over the top at the post. Okay, but what it also does is if we're running this pylon, the sooner I get over there, maybe the sooner Legereus Sneed falls off as he's looking back to the inside waiting for that over to come. And we already showed them the post with the over. So maybe he's thinking, oh, Brandon Ayuk's going to run the post. I'm going to slow play this and be ready to come off on the over. Boom. Now he runs the pylon. And now we get the touchdown because we've attacked Sneed instead of the safety on this one. But the sooner we get over there and give vision to those guys, the better chance it is for them to jump it. And also the better chance to get away from this front side safety and not allow him to play a factor in jumping that. But either way, really good throw by Brock Purdy to stick it in there and get another chunk throw. Thought he played really, really well early in this football game. Okay, so... Wide receiver screens, they threw a couple of them in this game. They didn't have a whole lot of success against this fast Kansas City defense, but you knew they were going to throw it and give Debo Samuel some opportunities. Here, we're going to get down close to the red zone, and we're going to fake the screen and try to get the double move off of it. Okay, and so these things, right, we saw the trick play. We're going to see it here in this video of the, the throwback for the touchdown. So you pull out some of the stops in this game and you always wrestle with the idea, okay, do I just play more conventional football because we're having success or do we try to dial up something special and steal an easy touchdown? But you see right here, Kansas City just plays this about as well as you can play this. The safety starts to come down, so this probably would have been the throw, but McDuffie shows up here and he's not worried about the screen. He's grabbing use check here. So even though the safety is biting, he plays this and takes it away. The backside safety as they come over is there to play this one, and that becomes another factor. Details, 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 details. So, all right, so these are things that I think about, okay? When you're running a play like this, so let's draw it up again, here and here, okay? And then obviously the fake here. So when I want to run this, what I definitely don't want to do is I don't want to allow anybody from the backside to become a part of this equation, okay? So what do I mean by that? Backside safety. I want to make sure that the backside safety stays on the backside and uses up the backside. So now I can get technically a two-on-one off the front side safety, okay? That's what I want. 
I want him to go wide with the screen and then I can hit Ayuk back to the inside. I want him to grab Ayuk to the inside and so now there's nobody left on the outside, okay? So I just want you guys to envision that this guy's not here and I'll talk about ways to get him out of there but he's not here on this particular play. Now I want you to watch this safety. If that's the case, watch that safety. He comes down, uh-oh, uh-oh, he comes down. Ayuk's going for a touchdown right here if that backside safety is not there. So what, what, what does that mean? What, like, what would you do different, Kurt? Well, here's the thing. Notice that San Francisco brings this to a four receiver side. Okay, so a four receiver side is usually going to push the defense to that side. You got four receivers over there. All we got is one guy left on the back side. Um, so we're going to push because you're overloading us to the front side. So they left four guys to the front side first and foremost. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm bringing Christian McCaffrey back to the back side. Okay, so I'm bringing him back there. So at least that gives these guys the thought that, oh, they got two receivers back here. We can't push with the motion. We've got to stay back here. The other thing that I'm going to do on this play, and I know they want to block it up to have a little bit more time, but I'm going to release, if I've got Christian, I'm going to release one of these guys back to this side. Because if I release one of these guys back to this side, this guy has to at least respect it and hold back here to this side. When we have four guys front side and George Kittle blocks, boom, doesn't matter. I see him block. As soon as he blocks, I know I've got a corner over here that can take him if he's going to chip and come get out late. I can push to help on the front side. And so all of that stuff, right? See the backside safety. See what he does? He holds, he holds, but he realizes nobody's over here. Nobody's attacking me. What if George Kittle releases down here? Safety's got to cover him. He's got to respect him. Then what? Then who's open? Then what do we have on this play? I believe we have a touchdown on this play if we're the 49ers, if we run it that way. Details, little things. Why do you go four strong? What are you gaining by putting four guys to the strong side there um, on that particular play? It's a question you always have to ask. Maybe there is a reason. Maybe when we go four strong, we see... I don't know. We see them do something different. They don't push over. I, I'm not really sure. To me, if I'm attacking in that way down the field, I don't want to bring anybody else to the party. I want to keep as few guys over there as possible. If I'm running four guys out to that side, now it doesn't matter because I feel I can overload them anyways, but it's just a question that I ask when I watch different play design like that. Okay, here we go, getting into the second quarter. All right, and again, McDuffie uh, just playing really well. We're going to wide motion here, okay? The one thing that's always hard with the wide motion is that you're usually going to leave this guy inside of you when you wide motion. And so, you know, again, I, I like the wide motion. There's things to do with it, but just understand if they're playing a man-type situation, the man's probably going to stay inside of you. If you do it with zone, now there's a better chance of getting back inside of you. So a couple times that they did this, uh, they lost leverage because uh, Kansas City ended up playing man in those situations. So this is what they're going to run here. They're going to run a seven stop. They're going to have Ayuk kind of running the crosser there, and then they're going to have uh, Debo on the post. All right, so you get man-to-man -man coverage, and really, really tough right here. Okay, so... You don't really have anything going for you on this particular play. Um, Crosser gets jammed. I talked about them getting physical. Crosser gets jammed. They run the seven stop here, which I know more peer progression will be the last read. But then they chip George Kittle. So when they chip him, as I always talk about, when you chip a guy, the defender stays underneath you. So just peek at the top here real quick. Okay, so see, see what I'm talking about? We're chipping George Kittle while we're running a seven stop over there. So his defender stays inside with him and covers up the seven stop. If George hit this or, or even got out to the flat right now, what do you think this guy's going to do? He's going to match him to the flat and this one's going to get open if that is a primary uh, read for this particular play. I'm not really sure it is. I think they're really trying to get this 
to this, so maybe it's kind of a double post combination. Get this defender to, to jump down and then go with the double post. No problem. They get what they want. They get the one-on-one. -on -one. Safety jumps the inside one. They get the one-on-one, -on -one. but again, with the wide motion, you lose leverage. Good throw, just better play. There's McDuffie showing up. Big play, could have been a touchdown. Gets his head turned, boom, knocks the ball away at the last second. Just really, really good defense, one-on-one -on -one against one of their best players. And those are the opportunities, right? It's so another third and long you noticed on there. And that was one of the problems in the first half is they didn't win first and second down. When they didn't win first and second down, they were punting or they were kicking field goals instead of having opportunities to score touchdowns because they got in third and long and they really couldn't convert them. It's really tough. Okay, we come back with a naked here. Um, I like it. Good play call. Trying to get George Kittle over here on the shallow to be the flat defender here. Um, he doesn't get over. He gets jammed by a bunch of guys. Uh, nothing happened in here. So nice job here by Brock Purdy to kind of hesitate and then get around the edge. He gets the horse collar call. So they're able to come out here on first down and pick up a bunch of yards. Uh, but he does a nice job negotiating uh, on those naked bootlegs. Done it all year. Did it in this game really well. Okay. Not really sure what this play is, I'm, I'm going to guess, but I don't really know, uh, that this is another one of the pylons. Front side, they run a post, okay? So they're trying to get the big play pylon, and then I, I'm guessing, simply guessing, because uh, it appears to me that's what they would try to do on this concept, is they're going to bring Debo on the over again. So we've seen it, post, over, pylon, over. I think this is another pylon, over uh, type concept, but you're going to see... McDuffie on Debo. So just keep your eyes there right now and you see, jam, jam. He can't get off. He can't get free. He can't get away. And so that's why I'm not really sure what this is, but I can't believe this is, hey, we're going to run two guys deep and then Debo's going to run a five-yard hook route over the ball. I, I just think he got jammed and he couldn't get free, so he's just trying to find some space right here. But give credit to Kansas City. There is nothing open on this particular play. They get a little pressure. Brock's got to buy some time. There's nowhere to go. And it leads to a sack. All right. So here we go. Two high safety look by Kansas City. Here they're running what looks to be an inside fade with a one step. That's part of... Uh, uh, of what you see um, them do a lot. You're going to run down the middle here, and then they're going to run that one step underneath with Debo, and then a swing over there. So you really kind of look to the left here first and see if you get some kind of look that can give you uh, Brandon Ayuk on that inside fade. It's really more of a man play or a single high safety. You got two high safeties. That to me is, is pretty much dead the whole time. So for me, what I'm going to do on this play is I'm going to read this inside defender right here. See if he takes Kittle. If he takes Kittle, I'm going to try to replace underneath to this one step, although it takes a while for the one step to get there. And then if McDuffie squeezes the one step, then I'm looking to hit the swing out to the front side. So I'd like to see Brock a little bit quicker on this. So you peek back, safety there, dead. Get your eyes right here right now and be ready to hit uh, Debo a little bit quicker here. But you notice, that, that's what's hard about this is that he's coming from such a wide spot. He's not really open yet because McDuffie can drive on it. He's got to get almost in here to the hash to beat McDuffie on this particular play. But I'd like to see Brock kind of hitting it right there instead of waiting longer. And now, if you feel McDuffie squeezes, right, here's your throw to McCaffrey to the outside, but a lot of it, I think, started a little bit quicker off of Ayuk to find Bolin down the middle to see if he chases um, if he chases uh, Kittle here, and then get your eyes to this guy to get this ball out a little bit sooner. Took him a little bit longer than he wanted, and ended up missing the throw a little bit low. So even here, and again, I, I, you know, I don't know how they teach it, and I, I don't know if they understand what the quarterback's reading, but I'd love to see Debo running here running here and a lot of times I know these one steps are 
You either get it now or you don't get it. Uh, so, so I get that. But that's why, to me, I would talk my guys through, hey, you can come off a little slower right now to see if you get the football. Once you don't get the football, get going. Get screaming almost like a shallow route because no, I've got a guy going down the middle, so I need you to get underneath that guy. So if the defender that's in that area takes the deep one, I need you to replace in that area. So I need you to get there a little bit faster. And you notice Debo is kind of just settling, throttling down here. Whereas if he goes a little bit faster here and gets over here, I think he beats McDuffie. Now we get the football to him and we've got a big play opportunity, even though I, I think there's a big play opportunity here, even if he catches it, but maybe not as much. Again, just little details of the understanding of, yes, you're there for the one step, the quick throw, but if we don't have that or we get zone or whatever, keep coming because you can be a viable part of the rest of the concept uh, if you understand what we're doing and who the quarterback would be reading on that particular play. Okay, really like this play and read right here. So it's a skinny post right here uh, by Debo. Here they love to run this with the choice route by McCaffrey. Now, they do a little change up here and they run what I call chug, a choice and go on this particular play. So he pushes up like he's gonna run a choice, tries to hold the linebacker safety that's there, and then he turns it into a go route here. Now this is the one that's always dicey because what the quarterback has to see is he has to see this defender get outside. So once he sees that defender get outside, if there's an open area inside, I have to think post first. I have to think stick it on Debo here because if I don't and I'm late and I'm waiting for McCaffrey to do this and the corner falls off on him, we're dead. So as long as there's an opening to the inside and the corner doesn't just come right now and clamp, oh, I'm sorry, I think that's Jennings right there, and clamp to Jennings, nope, my bad, Debo, uh, and, and clamp to Debo right there, then I've got to take Debo. If he clamps to him right now, now I can get to my one-on-one -on -one out here, okay? Because you see, look at Christian McCaffrey. Look at him. Oh, man, that's a huge play right there. And it's easy to say after the fact, oh, the corner did chase in. Did he chase in early enough, right? Because he got wide initially. Did he chase the football? Is that why it's open? But, man, it was so close to an opportunity for a big play. But I believe Brock made the perfect decision here because he sees number 20 jump outside the numbers. You can't bank on the fact that he's going to chase this because ball's already out of uh, Brock Purdy's hands right here. Good decision, finds the hole, gets the ball out. Just kind of a bummer because maybe there's an opportunity for a big play on the outside, but you just can't wait and hope because the initial look says, hey, you gotta take the skinny post. All right, this one, again, interesting to me. I, I, I just, I, I don't understand some of this stuff. So Brandon Ayuk comes over here and then he runs out here to the outside. Now, I just want you to watch, before we get into anything else, just, just watch his route. Like, watch it. Like, what are we doing here? Like, he's not even looking. Uh, like, he's not even an option right here. Um, I, I, I don't really know. And then he finally turns here and looks back at the quarterback, although he would have been open if, and again, I'm not saying they're doing this, if he's running an out route right here, this is a steal. This is an easy completion right here. Now, what we talked about and what they like to do is they like to do this and then run the return right here, which again, I'm not a huge fan of because it says we can't throw it to you uh, until later. We don't have the option to take you right now. I'd like him to run the out, and it looks like Debo here is running an inside fade. Uh, again, I don't really know what this route is because we're not looking outside, and then Debo gets to about there, and then he starts to slow down. He's being jammed again. He starts to slow down, so what is he supposed to run? If he's running an inside fade, run the inside fade. We got a shot one-on-one -on -one to you on the inside fade. He kind of slows down. There, we got a big in on the backside and then Christian McCaffrey running away right here, but I don't know what's going on on the front side. Like, why would I run a return here with Christian McCaffrey coming 
this direction doesn't make sense. So I'm, I'm just confused and dumbfounded. And look at Debo. Now he's breaking out and stopping. I don't know what Brock's supposed to read here. And it's a play action. So with the play action, maybe you don't have a quick out because it's hard to throw. I don't know. I would have loved to have seen this. And if you want the inside fade or even a corner out here and then work back to this and this that's coming in your direction, but you have some throws over here, but I don't know. I mean, we can say what we want because we walk, look back and we look at stats and stuff, but I mean, just tell me what, what are they doing? What, what is Brock supposed to be reading? What is this concept over here to the left side? Cause I don't see what's going on. I don't see what they're trying to do. Now I'm sure Kyle Shanahan had a purpose and was trying to do something. I just can't tell what it is with the way these guys are running their routes. So it was a really well done by Brock Purdy to go, man, it's ugly over there. I don't know what we're doing. Get down to your check down, get a completion and make some sort of positive play. Okay. All right. Another problem, uh, you know, if you watch some of my chief stuff, are you going to check out the insider uh, that I have on NFL Plus? Um, it shows uh, the last drive in OT by the Chiefs. San Francisco started to come after him, and Patrick Mahomes had an answer. He had a pressure plan. He had a plan for pressure every single time they brought it. Okay? San Francisco, not quite as good with their pressure plan, and it hurt him at times in this game. So Kansas City here is going to go blitz zero. Um, so no safeties back, zero safeties back, playing any kind of safety position, and it's strictly man-to-man -man across the board. He's got Kittle, he's got Debo, he's got Christian, he's got Ayuk, he's got check. So it's man-to-man, -man and they're bringing everybody else with pressure, okay? So the problem here is that you're going to run Christian McCaffrey on a return. So again, these return routes, you can't hit them early. You can't hit them fast. You have to wait for them to get out and back in before you hit it. Okay, we're going down the field here. We've got an under here with that under being with the return coming at him. So we're taking bodies to him. So even if I wanted to throw this under to the outside, I got to throw it through some other guys. So really, my only hot opportunity is Debo Samuel on this particular play. If I'm Brock Purdy, here comes a free hitter. Blitz zero, that is my only quick throw opportunity on this particular play. Debo is getting jammed back here, which is another thing we want to try to avoid is having to throw hots uh, into a jammed guy because he's going to get slowed down. I don't have time to slow down as a quarterback. I got to get the ball out of my hands, and it's not conducive to being able to, uh, to get a free guy. So it, it's having more options. It's having better options. Uh, for your, your quick hot in case they come up and press you. They press you, you're saying to yourself, okay, what, what's my quick throw? Where do I go with the football? And there's really no place to go with the football. So here comes the free hitter. I'm trying to throw it to a jammed guy. He's got a guy on his back. His arms aren't free. It's really tough. I can't hold it. Boom. I'm trying to fit it in there. And there's just nothing. There's nothing for me right there. And it becomes the other problem because I'm having a hot to the backside, but my hot defender's coming front side. So that's why to me, if we're in a situation like this, I wanna build in some hots to the front side. Hey, maybe it's a flat, double slants over here. Maybe it's a stick. So I'm gonna stick inside and push vertical and then come this guy off the flat so I can create some sort of rub and also have two quick throws to the front side so I can visually see where my protection issue is, and I don't have to turn my back to it because I only have one hot and it's on the backside. If that's the case, I'd rather slide my offensive line this other direction and let the free hitter be coming in my face so now I at least know how much time I have to hold the football. As soon as I turn my back to it, I don't know. I don't know how much time I have. If I hold it an extra tick to let Debo get separation, I'm probably sacked here, but I really don't know because my back is turned to the guy and boom, he's getting hit, no separation. So Brock getting hit there, Debo getting jammed there, no real chance to be able to complete that hot route. All right, then we come back to, you know, pulling out all the stops. Quarterback in high school, Juwan Jennings, he comes back 
and catches this one. Now, I don't know uh, if this is a first look for him. If you get this and we block and George Kittle comes open, go ahead and take it. But they cover that really, really well. So if that is an option, uh, good peeking at it, seeing that it's covered, not trying to force it down the field, and then throwing it back to the other side. Now, I see this, and I see Christian McCaffrey way outside the numbers, and he's throwing this, and I'm like, oh my gosh. That is a long, long throw right there. But great job, good job by Christian McCaffrey to attack it and come back. Now, all kinds of uh, people talking about holding penalties in this game. And yeah, I think there were some holding penalties in this game that weren't called. A lot of people are saying, well, Bosa was held a lot. Yeah, he was held a number of times. I think this was a hold right here too. Uh, right here, you grab that defender right there. Maybe he's making the tackle right here. You grab him, you slow him down. But regardless, I'm, and the reason I'm pointing it out is not to say, oh, this should have been called back, but to just say in games like this, there are a number of holding penalties. In this game, there were as well on both sides, and they weren't always called. This one possibly sets up a touchdown for the 49ers, but I love the play call right there by Kyle Shanahan. Pulling out all the stops. You're in the Super Bowl. Pull out all the stops. Try to steal uh, one here or there in the course of the game. We've seen that already in the first half. He pulls out a couple things trying to steal an easy touchdown. He was able to get one here at the end of the first half and keep the momentum on their side.